Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about designs and why they're important in general, but we'll also be talking more specifically about high level designs or architectural models. Developing designs is a very important aspect to designing digital solutions. And this is because it ensures successful creation. Computer scientists use plans all the time. They don't just jump in and start coding. And while there's times when exploration and play can be an important part to learning, sometimes when projects become more complex or you're working with teams, designing plans is an important process. In fact, the planning stage is one of the most important aspects to designing digital solutions, as it helps computer scientists figure out what to do, how to do it, and the logical steps. Using designs are also critical for forming and communicating ideas and for identifying aspects that can be improved. Another reason for using designs is that computer scientists often work in teams, where each team member might be allocated a particular task to do or a component to develop. Being able to identify the various components is crucial to being able to easily allocate tasks and then bring these components together to form a whole solution. In computing, we can get started on developing solutions by preparing a high-level design of a solution. Or in computing, sometimes we refer to this as an architectural model. A high-level design can come in the form of a document, a mind map, or some model of some sort. A high-level design provides an overview of an entire solution, platform, system, product, service or process. And this is at some level of abstraction. This is in contrast to low-level designs and other design strategies that we'll cover shortly, in which the finer details are presented and unpacked. When creating high-level designs, we use the computational thinking skill of decomposition to break down a problem or solution into smaller tasks to complete. We then use abstraction to broadly describe what might happen in the system at each element. You might choose to incorporate a high-level design into your learning and teaching of digital technologies by asking students to mind map their solutions. It could be a great way to support planning and early feedback and allow students an opportunity to communicate ideas by pitching their designs. Let's have a look at some of the elements that need to be considered in a high-level design. The following elements might not be covered in every project, and it depends if they're applicable and what kind of projects students are doing as well as the level of detail that's needed. Firstly, we want to look at the general high-level overview of the functional requirements, which include things like what should the system, product or project achieve. We also want to consider the non-functional requirements, which look at how the system should behave. Another aspect is that you might consider what the user interface looks like. What kind of information will users need? How will users interact with the interface? Next, you might consider any characters, objects or other items that will feature in the program. Another important aspect to consider is the input and output of a program or a project. What's the input? Does it have any data coming in? How will the user interact? Will it be with a mouse? Will it be with a keyboard? And what's the output of the project or program? Will there be some kind of visualization, some visual image? Could it be a sound or could it be an action? Another thing that you might consider is what kind of tools and platforms will you use to create the program or to support the development? An important stage to consider is the flow of the program or the process of design. So what's the design stages that you'll need to go through to produce this solution? Or another way to consider it is how will users interact with the program? What is the flow that they need to go through from start to finish? There might be also some other considerations that need to be made, such as constraints, ethics, privacy, and any resource limitations, such as money, finances, and time. Here we, have two, here we have two similar versions as examples of how one might mind map an overall high-level design. As you can see, there's no one way that you can do this. And you might structure your high-level design depending on how you prefer 
As you can see, there's no one way that you can structure a high-level design, but we present this as a guiding example. As you can see, there are many design aspects to be considered in the process. Even these elements will need to be broken down further so that you can plan more detailed approaches to inform design and implementation. We'll be looking at more detailed design shortly. 